tutorial shows how to use Illustrator, create a series of artboards, export them, and then we'll open those artboards as a stack in Photoshop that you can animate. So this is like a, a very basic and quick way to iterate on GIFs. And if you wanted, you could even take the stuff that you've made so far, place all of those images in artboards, do this very technique I'm going to show you, and just see how your thumbnails look right now as an animated sequence. This is like a great way to get started. And you can say like, oh, this part looks awesome. Like the transition from this to this looks great. But this part doesn't make any sense. So you can have a sense of where to focus or where to refine. So right here I drew a series of robots. Um, I drew this robot first. And then I pasted it in place here. And can anyone tell what's different about these two? The foot's up, and also this kind of, uh, I don't know what you call this, basically like his control panel has changed. So I, I changed two things here. His foot is up, and the control panel sequence has shifted. And now we're back to the original robot. Can you tell what's different here? The control panels. Control panels, the foot's and the foot's back down. And now we have another one here. This is the fourth one. What's different? The right foot up. Right foot up, control panel, that's right. And now he's uh, back to the original state. And then the last frame, he goes to sleep. Aww. That's super cute. So it's like, a, this took me about um, 34 years to make, because that's how old I am, and I've been working on this my whole life. But in the grand <laughs> scheme of things, it took me about a minute to make this small prototype. So you get my point. So now we're going to go over to Photoshop. Maybe you've used this before. I'm going to open up the images as a stack. So there's a spot under scripts, load files into stack. I'm going to browse. I made a folder named Robot Dance. And then I have all of my images that I exported from Illustrator as high res PNGs. Um, and I can go back and show you how to do that. And I left them transparent around the robot's edges. So if I want to throw in like a cool background of, um, what's that grocery store we were looking at? Stu Leonard's. If we want to put Stu Leonard's in the background, we could do that. Or if I want to put like a bucolic farm scene behind my robot, I could do that. Or maybe we put this well, robot inside someone's body so like they could be a robot gynecologist or a robot proctologist. Like we could put it in those type of scenarios too. I have all these options because I clicked yes on transparency. It sets me up for the future. So here are the files and it's going to put them in the order of the artboards because they're properly numbered. I'm going to say OK. And you can see it's doing its thing. It's going one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now all the layers are on so I can see everything. I can see where the foot's up, where the foot's down. So I'm going to have to turn them on and off when it comes time to animate them. Oh, Photoshop. Let me make this full screen. So I've got too many controls open. Get out. Go away. So now I have the video timeline up. Um, there's two views. You can do the traditional video editing view, which is kind of the nonlinear view. So you have stacks on stacks on stacks. But I find when you're making a GIF, it's a little bit easier to see them as um, one square after another. So when the timeline first shows up, it asks you to create a video timeline. And you do that by going like this. Boom. So the default view is kind of like if you're using Premiere, which I think kind of sucks for making a GIF, because you want to see one thing after another. So I prefer this view. It's just one little square. Um, and now I'm going to turn off the layers I don't want to be seen. So I'm going to go back to layers. How do I see that? Window. Thank you. So I'm going to turn on everything except robot dance number one. Or frames. And frame one. So I'll put him right here so you guys can see. So Right now, this is set to play for 5 seconds. I'm going to set it to play for 0.2 seconds. I'm going to copy this layer. 
Now I have my second frame of animation. I'm going to turn off that first layer. Oh god, where'd everything go? It's gone. Oh, there it is. It's right there. So now I've got change between the first layer and the second layer. Look at that. We're animating. He's super cute. Thanks. I think he's pretty cute. Does anybody want to name him? Can he be Buster? Buster. Because he's bustering a move. Um. <laughs> so we can see, I kind of put in these little stupid panel things so I can get a better sense of how it's animating. Oops, I did something. I don't want to crop it. I take that back. So you see, like I put these little uh, animated panels so I can get a better sense of the animation. Like I can see the foot stomp, but I can also see that. So that's where the change is important. So you can see like how one is changing from the next. So I'm going to take the third one, duplicate that. Then I'm going to turn off three, turn on four. Okay, now I've got four frames. I think you can also make panels from each of your layers without having to do that. You can. I'm doing the super newbie version. Okay. So I turn on five. And last but not least, we'll do number six. So I'm going to say uh, loop it forever. And I'll preview it like this. So maybe we want to change it. Maybe we want to make it kind of have some more suspense. So I'll go to this last frame when he falls asleep. And let's say five seconds. So people are like, oh, it must be over, and they walk away. I guess that's it. Well, let's go on to the next review. Oh, it's doing something again. This is what a reviewer would say at your review. Oops. Five seconds is kind of long. So let's change it to one second. We see how it's like it's a loop, it starts over again, goes to the same spot. Super basic foot stomp animation. Um, and now when I export it. How would you make it so that <clears throat> you don't like feel at the end of it as much? Like to like make it look better again? Do you mean so it would kind of start where it began? Sort of, yeah. Well, like let's say I just throw out this last frame. And just let it keep playing. Then he's just kind of foot stomping all day. That way it's like kind of an uninterrupted loop in that case. And we don't want to see him asleep. Maybe we just want to see him keep stomping and keep processing. Like we can see the processor running on his chest panel. We know this robot's working. We don't need that last error message. So that's one way to do it. You just take one out. It's like, don't need that. Throw it out. Now I'm going to export it, so I'm going to save as for web. And because I exported this at high resolution, so 300 dpi, um, and I'll go back and show you that in Illustrator, the exporting tools. This is what it looks like. So it's it's kind of big. This is 100%. So it's you can see the image size is 600 by 900 pixels. And let me slide this part over so you can see some of the GIF refinement controls. Can I pull that up? I think I'm locked into the projector screen, so hmm. let me try this. Drag this up. Well, I'm just going to hit enter and it'll save it as a GIF. I'll show you the controls in person. Is this projector is locking me into a very small resolution, um, so just bear with me. 
I'm going to go back to that folder, robot dance, and it robot dance gif. I'm going to open it in a browser so I can preview how it animates. Now I can see it working. It's looping forever. And because I made it a little bit large, I can scale it up to that big. This is kind of like the full size it would be if we were going to post it on a website. So is it like a so you made it like on the alpha layer, so it's like transparent. Yeah. yeah. So if we wanted to change the color of this page, we could change the color of what's going on on this website, for instance. So the background could be a picture or it could be something else. We could take this asset and animate it using CSS or JavaScript, have it kind of wander through a scene, or we could have the scene move behind it. So having transparency sets you up for a bunch of different things. Um, so if I wanted to add like a background to this, because um, I'm a layer mayor, I like to keep things tidy. Um, so I would put all of these in a folder called Robot Dance. So I'm gonna drag this, pull them all in here. Now I can easily add another layer. So where should we put this guy? Anybody have a suggestion? Where should we go? Indoors. Stu Leonard indoors. <laughs> so we'll put him here. That's kind of small. North Korea. This is pretty big, actually. You can see, oh, I think this is what we want. Oh, uh, that's too small. Go to search tool to make it large. Yes. There's a certified image. Certified image. No. Tools. Tools. No. Size. No. Large. Ooh. Let's see. We want to. As vertical of an image as possible. I think this is the winner. Well, this story is so like Nadia, like Nadia will shop here. Yeah. All right, so we'll copy this image. We're gonna drop it in here. We're gonna scale it down. So 25. <laughs> The Andy Valley thing. It looks like just the height is just like straight across. She wouldn't like my house. Oh, the trailer is cute. I love clowns. I just do you like clowns. All right. Just like that. So now we've got this weird. <laughs> background in there. So you see you see my idea by if you want to leave transparency you can have some options that way. And we could also throw some effects on the robot dance so we could multiply it. We could color burn it, which is kind of the same thing. We could do an overlay. So it looks like a ghost robot. Um, so this is quickly becoming like a weird digital meme looking thing. Um, so you see how you can spin out of control in the best way possible really fast. So let's just back up to Illustrator and I'll show you the exporting controls as we skip that step for the kind of like kitchen cooking purposes of this demonstration. I did that beforehand so you could see the Photoshop. So we're back in Illustrator. If you go up to export, export as, in this case I selected PNGs and I made sure to say use all the artboards. I say export. And I put high resolution. So high, 300 PPI. And I made sure the background was transparent. But I could also choose white. Or I could choose black. 
or I could choose transparent. So you have three choices. So that's about it. So that's one method of making GIFs. There's plenty others out there. I have a couple in the tutorial for this assignment. Um, After Effects is also an option if you want to do things that are a little bit more complex, like if you want to have things move in and out of the scene. That's an option too. But let me stop this recording. And I'll post this to the Google Classroom.